Like I said, if you had a player on your fantasy team in the Lions-Saints game, enjoy it. And you probably did. Drew Brees, six touchdowns, um, really a mo tying the modern-day record. All the quarterbacks who threw seven touchdowns in one game played, you know, a long time ago in an older era where things like that were more likely to happen. So, you know, he had one of the best days you'll ever see from a quarterback. And, you know, I like to see it. I know, arguably, he was running up the score a little bit. I personally don't consider it that because the Lions were scoring points too. The Lions were technically in this game. They had the opportunity to come back and win until the very end. So, it was fun to watch Brees throw all those touchdowns. Um, and they needed it because the Lions hung tough too. Um, Stafford. I don't know, guys. I like throwing a rookie quarterback out there and letting him take his lumps, I like that, but the way he looked out there, I'm thinking maybe he's just not ready. Maybe he's not capable of learning anything from this experience because he's just not ready for the NFL. Maybe you have to wait with him a little bit. So he did not look good out there. He made some positive plays, but on the whole, three picks, no touchdowns. The Lions did score 27 points, which is great, but he looked shaky out there. I'm going to give him a few more weeks, but I will say nothing good is going to come of this if he's not ready for the pros yet. And I'll also say my 1,000-yard rushing prediction for Reggie Bush is very shaky right now because they're not even using him like that anymore. They're not even trying. Jets-Texans, one of my two follies on the day, and... Um, it's the Popsicle team, you know. Everybody was talking about the Texans. This was the year they were going to make the wild card. This was the year they would make the playoffs. Too much pressure. The team is not ready for that kind of pressure. And I think they helped show today. Nothing from Andre Johnson. Nothing from Steve Slayton. The Rex Ryan defense had them completely befuddled, I guess. They have a great offense in terms of talent, so... They should be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Rex Ryan defense, and they did not. They showed they're not ready to go up against those kinds of defenses, and it's a little disappointing to see. It's a long season. They can turn it around, but that did not look like a playoff team to me. So for the Jets, Rex Ryan shows how good a defensive coordinator he is, getting those guys to play excellent defense in his first week of coaching up that defense. And, you know, Mark Sanchez perfect player for that team after all it looks like not just because of how he played I don't put too much stock into how he played yeah he played well but that could easily disappear in uh, you know just like that um, his attitude is good for New York I think his fame because he played at USC is fits in with the whole New York thing it it worked with them and he played well out there against Houston admittedly I'm still not the biggest fan of him but his attitude and his play so far is has been very positive so that was a good pick for New York it's the kind of at it's you know not about all about how you play it's the attitude you bring to the team and Sanchez got it done the Franchez that's what I'm gonna call him now the Franchez mark the Franchez because he's the franchise now um, Broncos and Bengals uh, I wouldn't wish that on anyone and to any Bengals fans out there, I am sorry. I would not wish that on the Rams. I wouldn't wish that on the Niners. I wouldn't wish that on any team that I don't like. The worst way to lose a game that you may ever see. Because this game was boring. I got coverage of this game. I had to watch part of this game. And I really didn't enjoy it. Orton looked awful. The Broncos offense did nothing. The Bengals offense was inept. And finally, they drive down at the end for what should have been the game-winning touchdown. You know, Palmer was, I guess he got it done when he needed it, but this whole game was just a battle of ineptitude. Both these teams just completely inept all day. And, you know, I think a Broncos fan, there are a couple of you out there, I think you guys will admit you should have lost. I mean, and to the Bengals, you can't blame your players they did nothing wrong I mean they didn't play a good game I'll admit but on that play the Stokely touchdown the Bengals did nothing wrong they tipped the pass and it just bounced up into the hands of Stokely who just had to run to the end zone your players did nothing wrong you 
can't blame the officials they had nothing to do with it they didn't have anything to do with that touchdown can't blame injuries it had nothing to do with that so it's hard to direct your anger at anything and you know that play was obviously a big fluke and where to direct your anger you can't blame the team you can't blame the refs you can't blame anybody it's just one big fluke and there's nothing else to say and you know to Denver I think they'll admit they should not have won but they will take it and to be able to win a game like that can vault a team to higher levels because now it's like you won this game that you shouldn't have won that doesn't mean anything if your team doesn't make the playoffs if you make a playoff run that win means something but if you don't that win meant nothing it may as well have been a loss because if you don't make the playoffs it doesn't matter I'm just saying uh, Niners Cardinals I got to watch the tail end of this game after the Seattle game was over we got coverage of like the last seven minutes you know, I thought the Cardinals played well, except for Warner. And this is the elephant in the room. I mean, people are talking about Jake DeLome. He's the elephant in the room. Warner is the elephant in the room for the Cardinals. Not only did he not play well yesterday, because he didn't, he didn't play well the whole preseason. And looking at it, he's old. He's never had injury-free back-to-back seasons. He's very injury-prone. He's He kind of had a out-of-the-blue year last year, so you don't want to take that completely seriously. So, looking at all this evidence, and now he pretty much blew week one for the Cardinals, because the Cardinals played well outside of him, I thought. Maybe it's time to look at Leinart. And that sounds crazy, I know, because Leinart has looked terrible, but at least he has a chance. I don't know if Warner has a chance of being good this year. I think Leonard gives the Cardinals a better chance to get good play out of their quarterback. Because this was obviously a winnable game for Arizona, and they didn't do it because Warner played bad. Warner was awful out there, and to me, he is the finger. He's where the finger of blame needs to point. And, you know, for the Niners, um, I did think, however, the Niners impressed me with their quarterback pressure on the two big plays of the game the fourth and five and then the last play of the game they got pressure right up on Warner and Warner couldn't do anything all he could do was throw it away or get sacked so that impressed me because I didn't know if they could get pressure on the quarterback this year and they did they made plays on the ball they got two picks that were big and winning obviously they limited an Arizona offense that when you look at it on paper should be able to move up and down the field and they did not so you got to give it up to him for that. Uh, Giants, Redskins, M M Mario Manningham, you know, he's the kind of guy who you think maybe he'll do something, but he's never going to do anything. He, he, it's never going to come together for him, and then he does. You know, so I liked what I saw from Mario Manningham. He was a very rare, he was a special treat out there. Uh, Hakeem Nix got hurt. He's out for like two, three weeks. And to me, that does suck, because I think he's the biggest wide receiver threat on the Giants. I don't think he's the best receiver, but if you're a defense game-planning against the Giants, Hakeem Nix is the guy you've got to look at. So, to me, that's a loss. Obviously, the Giants won probably better than the score said. Great of Oates to see O.C. make the biggest play of the game, coming back from that injury, making an awesome play. Uh, you know, Campbell got beat up back there. It's the same old stuff from the Redskins. I mean, they look like the same team that they did last year. And really the year before. I mean, it's just average. A very average team. That's really all I can say about that. So, I I don't know. I mean, I know the Redskins have Jim Zorn and stuff. I was still pretty much rooting for the Giants in this game, but... Really, I think Jim Zorn's out of there at the end of the year, and I don't think it's his fault, but I do think he will be fired, so I'm not really pulling that card. Um, Packers, Bears. This this was a great Sunday night game, and I really wish John Madden was in the booth because Madden loves to announce these kinds of games. Intense, back-and-forth, defensive, NFC rivalry. These are the games that Madden announced like a pro. He couldn't announce the bad games. That was really his problem, in my opinion. Um, you know, Erlacher, out for the year. 
Cutler, four interceptions. Uh, De Dvorak, or whatever his name is, the defensive uh, tackle. And a couple other players also hurt. Dvorak's out for the season. I think this Bears season might be over. I know it's really early, but good lord. I mean, it's exactly what I was talking about before. He, you know, if he had Brandon Marshall and Eddie Royal yesterday, two days ago, some of those passes he throws are great plays. But because he was in Chicago, they didn't work. And, you know, that just goes to show he needs to have good receivers to play good. Because he can be an excellent quarterback with great receivers, but it, it wasn't working yesterday. You guys pretty clearly saw that. So, you know, I'm ju I just wanted to get that out of the way. Um, this goes back to what I said when the trade happened. Cutler is a good quarterback, but he has a low football IQ.